In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up and configuring the Tensine Store product. There's a couple of ways that we can set up and configure the Tensine Store. We can either snapshot scenes via the DMX input port, we could send them over network, or we could capture them using the web server. We're going to first look at setting up the Tensine Store and capturing scenes via DMX input. In my control cabinet here, I've got myself a Tensine Store, which is at the moment powered by a 48 volt power supply, as you can see next to the device. I've also got a regular DMX cable, which I've got the other end of the cable here. In terms of a DMX output, I've already pre-wired that as per the wiring instructions that come with the unit. I've pre-wired that to this PAR on the table here. And of course the unit is powered and I've also wired up a 10 scene wall plate to the device. Our 10 scene wall plates are available as an optional extra to purchase with the 10 scene store. So with my DMX cable input I've got here, I'm going to connect this to my laptop here, which is running our Magic QPC software and I've got a Magic DMX interface, one of our USB DMX dongles connected to the system. The Tensine store can be programmed with, via any lighting console that outputs DMX. It doesn't have to be a Campus product. Of course, we'd love you to do that. So I'm going to connect up my Magic DMX, uh, DMX input to the system. You'll see the DMX LED has come on by the DMX input port on my unit, and that's now placed the device into programming mode. Of course, it's all powered up. I've got the LEDs on. At this point, I haven't even networked with a device at the moment. I'm not talking to it via network, it's out of box, and I can just snapshot scenes via DMX. So I've plugged in my console on my Magic Cube PC screen here. I've patched that fixture. Of course, I've got to patch it with the right address, etc. there as well. So I've patched that, I'm going to locate it, and I'm going to set it to a color, let's say red. I've now got DMX passing through the, the unit, and you can see my fixture has gone red. To snapshot the scene, we simply press and hold any of my scene buttons for five seconds. So I'm going to hold button seven. The unit LEDs will flash, and that's now captured the scene onto the unit. I'm going to change the color of my PAR now to blue. And I'm going to press and hold button number eight for five seconds, and that's now snapshotted this scene onto the device. I'm then going to clear my programmer here and turn off the unit and unplug my DMX cable. That's going to take the device out of programming mode, and I can then recall the scenes that I've just snapshotted onto the device, like so. So in its simplest form, we can just snapshot DMX from any lighting console. As soon as the 10 scene store receives a DMX input, it will go into programming mode, where you can then do a long press and hold. Once the DMX input is taken away, a press and hold won't do anything on the device anymore. The buttons become just a straight toggle uh, of the scene to allow me to activate the scenes. The other way we can program a 10 scene store is via network. We can send scenes over network from either a Magic Q or Quick Q console or a Magic Q PC system. I've got myself here a network cable coming out the top of a 10 scene store. The other end of this cable is here, and I'm now going to connect this up to my laptop here, like so. As soon as I plug in DMX to the system over network by ArtNet or Streaming ACN, the system will also go into override mode. So I can now grab the fixture, locate it. Essentially, the device at this point has become a little bit like a one port node. It's taking the ArtNet or Streaming ACN data, find network, and outputting it via the unit's DMX port. This allows me to, uh, to integrate the system, maybe if I'm using this as a house light system, but maybe. Now I've got it's in my ballroom and I want to connect a console for a show that's going on there and have control of the house lights. Best to do that via ArtNet Streamy ACN uh, because I can't override the scenes at this point like with DMX input by pressing and holding. The way I would get the scenes in is sending them over network. So as you can see in my Magic Key window here, I've got full control uh, over the PAR now. I can take data through the 10 scene store. How do we send our scenes? Uh, well, I could record a playback. Let's say, okay, I'm going to take uh, Magenta here and I'm going to record that onto uh, one of my playbacks. I'm going to record that onto playback six here and clear my programmer. So this is just a normal Magic Cube playback. And the way this works is it allows me to send my playbacks over to the 10 scene store. Now the 10 scene store is a static scene store. It doesn't allow multi queue stacks and it doesn't do effects. So my scenes or my queues need to be single static queues. Uh, so I, as you can see here, I've pre-programmed some basic color states for the 10 scene store uh, with my PAR on my playbacks. And I now want to send those over to the 10 scene store. To do that, I'm going to go to my setup window and I'm going to go to view DMXO IO and I'm going to go to net manager. 
Inside the Net Manager window is where I can see and configure any genetics devices or genetics nodes and tensing stores on the network. If you are using a Magic Cube PC system, before you do this, you will need to set the IP address of your PC and Magic Cube PC system to be in the right range of your genetics tensing store. All of our genetics nodes and the tensing store ship with a generic 10.IP address in a slash 8 subnet. So you can see here I've set my Magic Q IP to 10.0.0.65 on a slash 8 subnet, which is 255.0.0.0. When you're running Magic Q on PC, you do need to make sure that your Magic Q IP address matches the IP address of a network adapter on your PC. So in control panel on the PC in the Windows settings, I've already set my IP address of my system to 10.0.0.65. It must match uh, the Magic Q IP address. I can see that by double clicking and selecting the IP address here. If you double click and see a different IP address, you'll need to go into control panel and configure a static IP address. So once I've done that, in my DMXIO window, Net Manager, I can see my 10 scene store. And here I can configure things like the IP address of a device, its subnet. I can do things like firmware updates from this window. But I want to send my scenes. I'm gonna to go to the scenes window here, and you can see I've got a few scenes already on the device. You can see the two scenes that I snapshotted via DMX, scenes seven and eight. At the top of this window, I can hit send scenes, and I can either send my playback one to 10 from a current playback page I'm on, or I can send the first 10 execute items from execute page one. I'm gonna choose playback one to 10, current page. It's now gonna send the scenes to the device. And once that's sent, these scenes are now on the device, and you can see that playback at recorded playback six that was the Pyro Magento, and I pressed the button, you can see it's running that scene, and you can see the other scenes that I'd already pre-programmed onto this 10 scene store. The 10 scene store does also feature a contact trigger, so in options here, I've got various different options for the device, uh, one of them being here, my trigger mode, and I've got the option here of saying, okay, when the, my contact trigger is open or closed, uh, does it toggle the scene, does it persist, and I have to manually switch it off, so I've set my uh, scene here, scene active uh, while uh, my contact is open, and I'm going to set this to trigger scene number two. Uh, now, as you can see on the table here, I've got myself a basic contact trigger. Uh, it's just an open and closed contact trigger wired on the front of the unit. And once I do that, you'll see once I toggle the button, my scene will then come on on my device. And when I release it, it will go off again, like so. So I've got a basic contact trigger override, which will override over my scenes that are running on the device. It might be you want an override to bring all the house lights on or something at the end of the performance in the evening. So now I've sent the scenes over to the device. I could unplug the network cable and then run this unit as a standalone device. The other option is to configure the 10 scene store via the web server. Uh, the web server runs on PC, uh, and all I would need to do is open a web browser, enter the IP address of my 10 scene store, and then I can go and configure the device, snapshot the scenes, set fade times of scenes, change its IP address, etc., all via the unit's web server. So that's our 10 scene store.